Good morning and welcome to Studio 415. Today we will explore the changes to next year's schedule and explain what zero hour is. And we'll also inform you about two popular teachers who are leaving the classroom. We'll also have photography teacher Nicole Croy explain why she's attaching Altoid cans to many things around the area. I hope you're ready. It's time to enter Studio 415. Welcome to Studio 415. I'm Zach Sagan. And I'm Jordan Marini. Our top story today is going to affect current 8th, 9th, 10th, and 11th graders. Next year, Carroll High School will start about an hour later than it does now. Studio 415 reporter Nico DiPremio has the reasons behind the new delayed start. The NAC school board approved the change and now it's official. Carroll High School will have later start and end times next school year to help deal with current bus issues. Beginning in the 2016-2017 school year, the start and end times at Carroll High School will be later. The change in the schedule was made to address transportation issues. Probably the biggest reason had to do with the number of middle school and high school students that were waiting for anywhere from a half hour to maybe an hour at the bus and then arriving to school 40 minutes to an hour prior to school or waiting after school 40 minutes to an hour and it just extended the school day. This year school starts at 750 but next year school will start around 840. With school starting an hour later, that hour being called the zero hour, this will give students the opportunity to earn credits before the school day. The types of classes that are offered during the zero hour will be based off of student need. Next year students will see a change here at Carroll. Both the start and end times will be later. But, will you utilize that extra time to your advantage? Yeah, I think it's a great way to get more credits. Like, I took a couple online classes just to get more, and I think this is another way to get more if you need it. I might use it to take another class, um, just so that I can get all my 44 credits for graduating early. With school starting an hour later, teachers will no longer collaborate Wednesday mornings, eliminating the need for a half-hour delay on Wednesdays. So school will start at the same time every day of the week. Tentatively, next year's start time will be 8.40 and the end time will be near 3.35, causing the school day to be a few minutes shorter than it is currently. For Studio 415, I'm Nico DiPremio. Eventually, science teacher Andy Dietrich and English teacher Seth Slater will be leaving their classrooms for new jobs. But they won't be leaving Carroll. Studio 415 reporter Jared Gardner has the details on how their teaching focus will move from high schoolers to adults. Carroll High School science teacher Andy Dietrich and English teacher Seth Slater are both acquiring new positions within the tech department. With the combined 15 years of teaching at Carroll under their belt, Slater and Dietrich have decided to move on to a position in the tech department, officially named Curriculum Coordinators for Curriculum Instruction and Technology Integration. The position is going to focus primarily on helping teachers integrate technology into their own classes. In the upcoming school year, these newly added positions will be essential in integrating technology into the classroom. With Slater already being a frequent tech trainer and Dietrich using technology almost every day for five years in his classroom, they are great candidates for the job. They believe teachers have a good understanding of the technology, but they would like to show them how their teaching methods might have to change in the future. Students are using SchoolNet and Canvas more often in class because of the influence of the new curriculum coordinators. After teachers are familiar with those programs, Dietrich and Slater would like to get the teachers more involved with advanced programs. Then we're going to start to show them how to use certain programs to make music, other mo uh, programs to make uh, movies, uh, apps that do this, web pages that do that. There's a whole plethora of things out there. Currently, Slater and Dietrich are half-time teachers and part-time curriculum coordinators. Starting in the summer, they will be full-time, and by the start of the next school year, they will be out of the classroom completely. Dietrich and Slater will be relocated to the old ISS room as their new office. Room 516 has been vacant ever since they moved the ISS room to room 535 at the beginning of this school year. For Studio 415, I'm Jared Garner. From technology teachers to technology problems, with the move towards one-to-one -to -one next year, there are some concerns about how the CHS networks will hold up. 
With power school and school net constantly crashing, the concerns continue to mount. Studio 415 reporter Brian Macias spent time with administrators to get some answers to these tech questions. In recent months, the two programs, PowerSchool and SchoolNet, have not been working as expected. PowerSchool has crashed several times and SchoolNet has become inaccessible during important times such as finals week. The tech department is very aware of these problems and is working diligently to solve the issue. The main issue involves a broken link between PowerSchool and SchoolNet. The tech department links Pearson Books to the PowerSchool and SchoolNet networks so it is easily accessible to teachers. However, if the problem isn't fixed, it is only a minor hiccup that can be overpassed. The connection that's breaking for SchoolNet is also breaking our connection to a lot of the Pearson curriculum, which is where a lot of our on online textbooks are for um, English, math, science, and social studies. One main concern with the two programs is the implementation of one-to-one -one and how prepared the staff is for the change. I believe we'll be ready. There's a lot of work to be done yet, and that's a lot of what we're doing this semester, uh, getting things in line uh, for that rollout. But it's uh, very exciting, and we'll be ready. We've got some staff members that are absolutely outstanding in the use of technology and, and they're creative and they're they're already doing some things um, we've also got some staff members that that's not in their wheelhouse and so we've got to be patient and provide support although the administration may feel ready for the change many students do not believe these issues will be resolved in time while students may be getting frustrated they are not alone in their plight the technology department shares the frustrations I think that the teachers and students are having with it I, I wish it was working perfectly all the time. Uh, life with technology, things don't work perfectly all the time, but we at least try to get them resolved as quickly as possible, and it's very frustrating that this has gone on as long as it has. As time progresses, so does technology. Carol has decided to embrace the future by providing what they feel is best for their students. I'm very confident. It's, it's, it's the future. It's where we're going. It's, you know, um, you don't have all of the major textbook companies moving in an electronic uh, solution or an electronic product without there being a desire and a direction to go that way. Although we never know when these problems will be resolved, Adele Dickey, the Director of Technology for Next, is very positive that these issues be resolved by the end of the year. For Studio 415, I'm Brian Macias. Attention Neon Nation, Carroll High School will be having its annual blackout game Friday, February 12th versus Northrop. Shirts will be sold pre-order only. They are $10 each and feature a new design on the front and a picture of Coach Beasley's snarling face on the back. Order forms can be found in Student Services, the Athletic Office, and the CFC Office. Order forms and money are due this Friday, January 29th, and should be turned into Mrs. Rhodes on the 1012 side and Ms. Heater or Mr. Taylor at the CFC. The definition of art is something that is created with imagination and skill and that is beautiful or that expresses important ideas or feelings. Studio 415 reporter Emily Drake spent time with art photography teacher Nicole Croy to find out about her latest project. For Croy, photography isn't just about snapping a picture. It's about spilling your heart and soul into an image. But as her latest project shows, some photos can take longer to create than others. Pinhole cameras. One of the most primitive and simple forms of capturing raw images. They open up a whole new world for creativity and photographic experimentation. Here at Carroll, students get the opportunity to use pinhole cameras in some of the many photography classes taught by 3D art and photography teacher Nicole Croy. Croy had always enjoyed analog photography, which is anything that is not digital photography. And she loved making and experimenting with pinhole cameras, taking her passion for pinholes to a new level with the creation of her truck. Three years ago, I received a Lilly grant, um, a $10,000 grant. And that basically allowed me to buy a truck, a, like a real truck, and then I turned into a camera. So that was where this all started. But after the truck, she was out of new, never before seen pinhole ideas. That is until a friend told her about a new method of capturing images through a pinhole, long exposure. All you need to begin this process is an Altoids tin and photo paper. Then, mount it somewhere outside, facing either the east or the west. I'd, um, leave it out there for anywhere from a day to, I have some that are 120 days. So they're outside the entire time exposing. So every day that the sun comes up, it records you know, the movement up, down, up, down, up, down. And if an image is out for 120 days, for example, you should technically see 120 lines. To some, this may seem just like an art project. But to Croy, this is an expression of her passion for analog photography. So I, I like digital, 
but I really love the hands-on. I love the dark room. I love making my own cameras. I love going back to the way it was, you know, almost 100 years ago um, and just capturing light in an unusual way and not, you know, not plugging in everything to the computer. But this isn't just about photography. This is about the freedom of expression, the opportunity to utilize tools to place one's heart and soul inside a work, the chance to find a purpose. You get to spill your heart and soul into a piece that's about your parents' divorce or about um, adoption or about um, you know something you've witnessed or something you're passionate about. So to me, it's about expressing yourself and you know creating with voice and, and, and saying what you feel, but instead of vocally, you're doing it through your artwork. To Croy, this isn't just art. This is life. For Studio 415, I'm Emily Drake. Students do not have to sign up for an art class to learn about art. There is a new club at Carroll that exposes its members to Japanese animation. Studio 415 reporter Andrew Studi joined the Anime Club for a day to see how students are creating and enjoying this artistic import. Carroll High School students in the 1012 building have more than 30 options for the activity period so far. Anime Club is the newest option to participate in. Students will experience Japanese pop culture and develop their understanding through the club. Anime is a type of cartoon made in Japan created by Japanese companies. This is what makes it anime. There are many different varieties of anime for everyone to watch, including action-packed, romantic, and other genres of anime. Because it is a student-led club, there should be a teacher monitoring the club. The teacher that monitors anime club is chemistry teacher Scott Chapman, who is also the sponsor. He makes sure that the anime shows the students want to watch are school appropriate. Anime kind of has a negative connotation when you, when you hear it um, as, as being inappropriate, maybe sexually, or maybe being inappropriate with, with just extreme violence or things like that. But really, it is a very wide range from what I've kind of just looked at to, to make sure that I was okay doing this club. Senior Zane Kono is one of the leaders of the club. He wanted to start the club not only for anime lovers to be part of an amazing experience, but also be remembered by starting a student-led club as well. The idea of starting an anime club was brought up between Kono and Yoder last year towards the end of the school year and started last semester. Although the club is located in the 1012 building, there are restrictions for freshmen and students to join. Freshmen are not allowed to join the club. Um, I don't know really why. I was up for it to bring more people into the club. But I'm assuming because we're in the, here in the 10, 12 building, there's that barrier, you know, freshmen have to stay down there. During the meetings of Anime Club, the students make drawings prior to the club for drawing contests. To participate in these contests, you must pay a $5 fee. After that, the club watches an anime show together or read Japanese graphic novels. These various activities are getting great responses from students in the club. At first, my friend had brought it up to me, but... Then I had realized that, you know, there's a lot more to anime than I had recently thought. And I just, after I started watching a few shows, it just, it, it became amazing. The next Anime Club meeting is today in Room 108 on January 27th, along with Ambassadors Club, Club Charla, Environmental Club, FBLA, Multicultural Club, Ractivist, Speech and Debate, Still Frame Society, and Student Council. For Studio 415, I'm Andrew Studi. Thanks for joining us today. If you have any story ideas that you would like to see covered, mention them to any of the students in the credits or Mr. Johnson. For all of us here at Studio 415, have a great day, Carol.